all right so i wanted to do a video uh going a little more in depth on variables i've seen this kind of popping up a lot people asking very basic like variable stuff or you know getting errors with their variables and just a few tips and tricks that you could use so let's look at that code so a variable doesn't exist in your memory until you've created it even if it's blank uh, like i have here it'll still be created and once you close out of your script, you'll then have all those variables from whatever that script was using disappear on you. I've talked about this with, you know, if you do want to save variables when you close your script, restart your computer, definitely check out my INI uh, videos. That's very useful for storing INI or uh, variable data into an INI file. So the first thing you got here is max memory, 256. This just increases the ability for your script to run at a larger memory usage. Uh, by default, I believe it's 64 megabytes, um, but you can increase that. But if you want to just only increase the variable storage capabilities, which you don't really need to do unless you're using, you know, like a variable that's storing like an essay amount of data into it, you should be fine. It, it can hold quite a lot just off the bat. But just in case you do, here's this for uh, 10 megabytes. Just do the math here. So first thing we got is if you want to create a variable or the variable maybe already has something assigned to it and you just want to clear it out, you just put the variable name with an equal sign there and nothing. Uh, clipboard, that's a built-in variable, so you can do built-in variables that already exist and have those cleaned out. Those will just exist in general on your Windows computer or Mac uh, there. There's a few different kinds, but Clipboard's probably the most useful one you'll see there. Now let's say you copy some data to a variable and it has like trailing spaces. You know, there's like a few extra spaces at the end of the sentence or maybe at the beginning of the sentence. Uh, and you just want to get rid of those, even like a line break or something. You can just do uh, the name of your variable equals and then in percent signs the same variable name. And this will delete anything that's trailing or at the beginning of your thing there as a good way to just kind of clean it up a little bit for you. Now, on the other hand, if you want to create kind of like a list, you can do the same thing as you have up here. And then just put this uh, dash in, which is uh, over by your tab key. Should be at least on most uh, keyboards, I believe. Uh, and that's just a line break there. And then, you know, whatever variable you're trying to put there, this would be helpful like in a loop or something a lot of times to just have it kind of create a list uh, in descending order. And you can always use sort after that, which I've talked about before to, you know, alphabetize it or something if you need to. Let's go ahead and run this script. So let's say you have a variable with, uh, you know, a whole s uh, string, a sentence there, but you're only really looking for like in here I'm using the date. I just want the date stored. I don't need all this other information here. So I'm just using a regex replace with the string name, which is up there. And then I just want to remove all lowercase letters, A through Z, and all uppercase letters, whoops, don't move that, uh, A through Z. And anything you want to like omit, you can put down here, but I usually don't have a need for that, so it's blank. Uh, Always make sure you put these two dots here before the equal sign, or it will not work. It'll try to actually store this as a variable versus actually running the command. And then display it here. And we're going to press F1. And there's our little message box, and all it has is that date up there. I did have a period, actually. I probably should have omitted that or just kind of done some way other that I might show you down here to clean that up. But it still, it removed all the lettering in there. Next, let's say that you want to have a max length in your string that's allowed, maybe user input or something, and you only want them to be able to put in 20 uh, characters, which will include spaces too, by the way. So I'm just doing string left, the string from up here, and the string also there. So it's just uh, going being assigned right back to the same uh, string there, and then display that. So that one's pretty simple, F2. So there it went, it cleaned out all the way up to 20 letters there. 
You can also, if for some reason you want to get information from the back instead, you can just change this from string left to string right. And that'll do the same thing, but just start down here and go 20. And here's another thing for uh, checking the length. Maybe you want two things to happen depending on the length of the string in the variable. So I've got my variable here. It's then going to do length, string length, and that string that's from up here. And uh, then it's going to check, you know, so that number length, or the length of the variable is going to be stored here as this variable. And it's just going to say if the length is greater than 10, message box string is too long, else message box string is okay. This is obviously where you would put your code where, you know, if it's greater than 10, do this, but if it's less than 10, do this instead. You can always add, you know, like an equal sign in here. So if it's equal to 10 or greater, do this. That way if it hits 10, you're still getting um, a result versus it kind of being like, well, if it's 10, I don't know which one to do now because technically it's both the if and the else. So you can do that, but let's go ahead and push that one. What is that, F3? So a string is too long, as you see there, because that is definitely more than 10 characters. So let's delete that. I think that's less than 10. Rerun the program. F3. String is now OK. So there we go. Uh, there is another way to do this. Um, this is the newest way. Uh, most recommend it if you're doing a new script. Um, but if that doesn't for some odd reason work for you, you can always try it this way instead, where it's just string len, the variable for the output, and the input variable there. And that's just going to do the exact same thing up there. Um, but I don't recommend doing it this way, just because that's kind of the old way. It might not be as reliable for some reason. So here's some string replaces. So I got my string up here. And for this, all I want is that number. I don't need the high or the order and the pound sign. So I'm just using a string replace here with the variable, uh, input, output. And I wanted to remove order and the pound sign with, and replace it with nothing. That's why that's blank, all occurrences. Then I would need to get rid of that explanation point there at the end too. So I'm doing the same thing here replace explanation points with nothing. Uh, up here too, if you wanted to replace certain things with spaces, you can use that built-in variable I've showed you before where it's just um, a space in um, parentheses signs there. But I don't want to replace it with anything. You can also do a string replace with a variable, kind of like that I did up there with the a space, but I'm going to do that to remove the high. You know, I could just put high here, but I want to show you the two different ways you can use string replace, whether with it the word being hard-coded in there or if you need to use a variable and display the results. So F4, and there we go. All I got was that 5165 there. All the other information got cleaned out for me. What's up next? Okay, so changing kind of like the format here. So here, uh, I got my variable. Everything is in lowercase, but I want this whole thing to be capitalized for some reason. I'm just going to do string upper, the variable that's going to be output, and the input of the variable, and display. Sounds pretty simple. There's also a string lower that you can use in case you just want everything lowercase instead. So there, everything's capitalized now for me. So this one is basically the exact same thing up there. Uh, I just kind of switched it up. A lot of different capitalizations and random under case. So I'm going to do string upper, output, input. But here I'm going to add a T to the end. And that just means title format. And title format, in case you don't know, is a sentence where the first letter of each word is just capitalized. And that's all that is. And you can do it this way too with string lower. It's just as long as that T's at the end, you'll be um, getting that result. What's that? F6? F6? So this is title format. Everything is capitalized um, as the first word. 
or the first letter in each word. All right. So the last one we got here is maybe you want to find a word in a sentence uh, specifically based off, you know, some way of splitting up this uh, string here. So I just got a few colors in there, red, green, blue. And as you can see, they're all separated by commas. So down here, I'm going to do color array, string split, that variable colors. And then in this field between the parentheses or quotation marks, I'm going to put a comma because that's how I want to split this up. If they were like explanation points or maybe a space, I could put a space here, uh, a letter. Maybe I want it to divide every time the, the R is shown or something. And then just uh, kind of added a loop here that's going to only loop as many times as this array has gone up. That way it's not always looping. So basically here it's going to loop four times, or three times, sorry. And then I just have this saying, you know, now take color array, a index, which is just getting, you know, whatever the current loop count is on, create my new variable, and then just a uh, message box. Color number is, uh, no, number one is this color. So this will show color number one is red. Then it'll loop again. Color number two is green. So let's just go ahead and do that. Color number one is red. Color number two is green. Color number three is blue. And since that's the last thing in that string there that it got, that loop is going to end because of the max index because it sees that, hey, you know, there's pretty much the end of the line. Go ahead and exit. And it's done. All right, so that's pretty much what I got. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about uh, variable kind of manipulations, cleaning them up, how they work, definitely ask me in the comments below. As always, I'll definitely be putting all this code down below. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you like my videos, please subscribe. I upload usually about two to three videos every week. Try to see what you guys are interested in. You know, look around the internet, see what kind of questions people are usually asking, and try to get something out there for you guys. All right, see ya.